So, welcome to this talk, um, giving your user interfaces a voice. And uh, yeah, let us quickly introduce ourselves. My name is Andreas. I am a UX designer on the Cockpit Web Console. Hi, I'm Shweta. I'm a part of the RHEL documentation team. And hi, I am Vendula, and I'm also part of the RHEL documentation team. So today we're going to talk about um, how we've been working together as uh, UX designers and, and technical writers. But first, I want to talk about uh, the subject of the day, uh, microcopy. Um, so microcopy is, are the tiny bits of uh, text in a product. It's the labels of the buttons, uh, the error messages, the field labels. Simple put, it's, it's pretty much everything you can read in a UI. And why is this important? So here's why I think it's important to keep your uh, microcopy, your interface text, tip top. Um, it's the way you communicate through UI, you, and the way you have a conversation with the user of, of the interface. And you use this language to guide them through the application and responding to their inquiries. In fact, a large portion of your graphical UI are just text, even more so with a, a CLI interface. And consistency uh, within the application, but more importantly, with other touch points that the person who uses the interface are really important, uh, such in our case, uh, the Red Hat Customer Portal, Red Hat Satellite, Red Hat Insights. And having this uh, language, um, it minimizes confusion, but most importantly, instills trust in the user that this is something they can trust and they can use. Um, and then clear and simple text um, is, is just more accessible. Um, making sure that you use simple English makes your interface more accessible to people who might not have English as their first language, but still um, they might be using your interface in English, such as myself today. Um, so, and even those who have English as their first language um, might ha not have a high reading comprehension generally. Or it could be situational. It could be that they don't have a high reading comprehension because they're in a hurry. They don't have time to, to go through it in, in detail. So it needs to be simple and straightforward. So here is a, a, an example. Here is uh, the application uh, we're going to talk about today, the Cockpit Web Console. And as you can see, we have quite a lot of microcopy. So now I'm going to hand it over to Shweta. And she's going to talk about more about that. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you, Andreas, for sharing the case studies and for the insights on why microcopy is important. Yes, I can't agree more that microcopy is one of the important aspects of user interfaces and also the command line interfaces. We are glad that we got an opportunity to work with you and to contribute to positive user experience. It's really exciting to see how teams can work together to bring in that positive experience for the user. Now, we have seen that typically a project has team members from project management who work with the customers and bring in the requirements for the products. There are UX designers who work on the layout which the users later on get to use. There are UI uh, uh, designers who are at the artistic elements to this layout. They are develop there are developers and QEs who work on the core features of the product, but there are also a group of people who are called technical writers, who typically join in late in the project, but they work for documenting the end user documents and documenting the features of the product for the users to use it. Now, these technical writers also work with the cross-functional teams and uh, can help assist to document or to write the UI text, to write the error messages, to write the tooltips and the CLI messages. Collectively, they can partner with the teams to work on the microcopy. Now, let's see how can you involve your writing buddies on the projects that you work. Now, because writers are the first users, they bring in the user's perspective, and they can be your audience for usability testing. Now, we also discussed how you how writers can help to craft the UI text or error messages or tooltips or CLI messages. But the main question is, how can you involve your writing buddies? Now, traditionally, we have seen writers are the last group of people who join the project, typically during the documentation phase. But this really does not help them 
because it takes a great deal of effort to understand a requirement or a feature after the product has been developed. At times, it so happens that the talent who is available for the knowledge transfer has already moved on to another project, and then there's a limitation with the knowledge transfer. And in such a scenario, it gets difficult for the writer to step up and to bring in some valuable suggestion. It might also happen that even though the valuable suggestion is valid, but it gets difficult to implement that change because the development cycle is already complete. So ideally, the best time to involve your writing buddies to call, is to call them during the planning meetings, during the functionality discussions, and also during the UI mock-up sessions if there are any. Now, how will you actually partner with them? You can send in your mock-ups for review. You can tag them in the Jira tickets. It's also a good idea to share your test setups with them. Um, and just we need to go to the next slide, please. So it's also a good idea to share the test setups with them. You can also try, try and get their hands on so that they can get, try their hands on the functionalities that are under development. While, the, while they review the mockups, they also suggest the UI text. They, possibly, they can also suggest some functionality improvement. Now, will the writer's suggestion be perfect in the first go? Well, definitely not. There are so many if and if not clauses which they might not be aware of. There are so many technical aspects that they might not be aware of. So your suggestions, your valuable inputs are going to help them come, to come up with better text. And in turn, it's going to improve the user experience. So if you haven't started to collaborate with your writers, I would encourage this is the time that you start your collaboration with them. With that, I'll now hand it over back to Andreas to talk about some work that we have done together. Thank you, Rana. So yes, we've spoken a little bit about the theory, but now we're going to talk about it, how we work together in practice as UX designers and technical writers. So the first thing I want to show is um, uh, the uh, UI for network bombing. So a problem was network bombing is hard. So for those who are not familiar with the concept of network bonding, it's a way to bring together several network interfaces um, to handle, for example, the network load better or to act as a backup in case of hardware failure. We wanted to create something that was simple and straightforward for our UI. And here is version one. So this was good, but we always make sure that for all the UIs we developed, we also try to run a usability test. So um, we put a user in front of the UI and give them a task and see how well the UI performs. In, that case, in this case, we run a study with 10 participants, all of them sysadmins, um, but they have mostly had experience with managing Windows Server and not specifically Linux or Linux networking. Um, usually the kind of thing that you get out of this kind of study is that you realize that you use the wrong kind of uh, uh, interface element or something is in an unexpected place or uh, it's something that uh, an error state has a, a wording that is, is confusing or, or incorrect. But in this case, what came up as a big problem was that the networking concept themselves was um, <clears throat> was very hard. Um, the names for them was things like Balance Ram Robin, 802 AD, etc. Um, and the actual concept of, of how they worked um, was something that was hard to comprehend for, for these uh, uh, participants. So after a lot of full back and forth um, with the, between the development team and the documentation team, we where we try to 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 do our best to to help this in the interface as much as possible we realized that we actually had to go ahead and put this explanations of these different networking modes into the documentation but not only did we do this but we also made sure that we had handy pointers uh, to the places in the documentation where people could find out more um, easily accessible from the UI itself. So we implemented this help menu. But not only that, we also, inside of the networking um, dialogue here, we uh, implemented some uh, inline help 
um, in this case about network bonding, where it's uh, on a high level explains the concept and then gives you a handy pointer where you can read more and understand the different uh, yeah, uh, behaviors of these different uh, network modes. And now I want to hand with Dr. Bandula and she'll talk about uh, her side of this experience. Yeah, thank you, Andreas. When I joined the cockpit team, Andreas asked me for help. I need to add text here and there, and it is too long. Help me to make it shorter and let's add more clarity there. So I tried, but actually Andreas's texts were almost perfect. So I was not able to help much at all or at all. Uh, but you know, I often hear from teams, we don't need documentation because we have a great user experience designer. And yes, user experience designer is a very important role in the product development. But it is not a silver bullet that resolves everything. The fact that the technical writer, uh, the technical writer complements nice, uh, nicely great UX design and well-designed application. So documentation, according, I, I think that documentation should be natural part of the product. So, uh, with a great graphical user interface, uh, you don't definitely don't need documentation for basic workflows. But if the topic becomes complex, you need to start to learn about it. We need to deliver the learning material for you and the designer ensures that the documentation is accessible and visible at the right place. You cannot understand bond modes from graphical user interface, right? This is a complex networking topic that must be properly explained and the explanation must be placed where you need it. And that's what we've done, actually. We added documentation directly to the product and added direct learn more link to the bond settings dialog box. So now I'm going to show you another uh, example where we also collaborated, but in a slightly different fashion. So this is what I call the SSH leap of faith. So um, this is a login screen for, for the Cockpit Web Console um, that you can see on any uh, RHEL or Fedora or, uh, yeah, what is it, SUSE, uh, Ubuntu, whatever system. Um, and you, it allows you to log in to, to that particular host, that particular server. But you, there is also a functionality where you can use this first system as a bastion host that allows you to uh, talk to a machine that maybe you are not, you cannot access directly, but that a machine that you have access to can access through a firewall or similar. Um, but there comes a challenge that once uh, you try to log in for the first time, uh, you need to trust that you're actually connecting to the correct host um, because we use this through SSH. So our first uh, version of this was um, something that is very, very similar to just the SSH uh, command line uh, tooling where you say they say, okay, the authentication cannot be established. Um, and here's a fingerprint, whatever that means. So. Um, we uh, realized that we actually had to provide more context in this place. What's a fingerprint? How do you verify it? What does it mean that, uh, like, why, why are you throwing me this, this uh, uh, exception in the first place? Why are you asking me to take a leap of faith? What is, what is the things that I could run into? So we worked together with Shweta, um, and then we came up with something like this, where we give you the information that you need in this, uh, particular case just there and there and then so you can easily know what you're doing even if this is the first time you're you're seeing this uh, interface so now I'm gonna uh, hand it over to Shreda and she's gonna talk about it from her perspective yeah. thank you Andreas for sharing this success story it was indeed an exciting piece of work especially because of the collaboration that we had and I cannot forget the number of back and forth discussions we had I remember I had jumped in quite late in the cycle and the functionality discussions had already taken place by then. It was a bit challenging to catch up with the functionality of this screen. 
and then the multiple use cases that we were trying to address on one single screen. To save on time, I did come up with my questions and my understanding about this screen and this corrections and the suggestions and inputs that I had received helped me to phrase the text in the first place. Now, the original screen mentioned eavesdropping, a man in the middle is attacking you, and then a redundant checkbox to accept the key and to log in. Now, when I first took a look at the mock-up, these words sounded very alarming to me. Well, a third party attempting to intercept the connection was one of the alert message that we wanted to give. But the commonly you know, used, the common use case that we wanted to bring out here was due to the operating system reinstallation, there's a change in the key. So the first version of my suggestion was pretty much closed by to it, but later on came in the various use cases that we wanted to consider, and then it got challenging. But it was all fun at the end, and it was exciting to see how everyone was jumping in to try their hands on, and how we ended up in shaping up the text. I would say it was a learning experience for all of us, and we ended up in a result that was satisfactory. I hope it will be very useful for the users too. Now with that, I'll hand it over to Vendila and she would like to share her thoughts and advantages of including or involving your writer buddies. Thank you, Shweta. Hmm. Technical writer is one of the customer advocates in your team. Once you start to write documentation and you see that it is too complex and hard to write, there are a lot of if else clauses it is an indicator that the feature may not be designed well. Your writer can warn you in the development phase or if you share uh, your mockups with them, even before the development phase starts, that something doesn't go so well. Uh, writing UX text is a standalone discipline today. You need to understand the rules and apply them on your on all your texts. And it doesn't matter if we are speaking about graphical user or command line interfaces. Uh, writers also regularly see a bigger picture and ensure consistency of used terms because they may be in touch with marketing, support delivery, uh, development, uh, quality engineering, product manager, and of course, uh, user experience designer too. Therefore, sometimes writers have a unique perspective that can give additional value to your product and make your users a little bit happier or at least less frustrated uh, in in certain point or certain situation while using your your application. Hmm. Next slide, please, Andreas. And this is, I guess, the the last one. Uh, if we still have some time, I have a following. Uh, I have some resources for you about microcopy. The first one is a pattern flight style guide. Uh, so there are all these rules uh, that you need for creating good UI texts. Second link takes you to the 10 usability heuristics. For each of these heuristics, there is a short three minute video tutorial that gives you a great introduction to this topic. Third one is a book, if you like books from Kinet Ifra. So try, try to uh, buy one. And if you liked today's presentation or introductions, look at the recording of our yesterday DevConf talk later when there is a recording. Uh, top things we need to learn about UX, where we talked about UX writing and uh, user experience design and showed some other examples from Fedora's cockpit web console.